Not all fairies are like Tinkerbell. Just like humans, they have their own personalities. And like bears or angry flatmates, some just like being left alone. And if you don't leave them alone, bad things could happen. There was once a girl, pretty and dainty enough herself to be a fairy, who was skipping along the moors, looking around for flowers. Any flower she could get her hands on. Primroses, daffodils, pansies. Spring had hit and all the flowers were all around her and she was loving seeing them all. But as she had a handful of primroses, she heard a noise coming from the distance. A sort of melody, a magical melody, a magical melody that made her want to dance and get closer. She thought about following the melody, listening out to where it could be, and she went over one hill, over another hill, through some trees, and as she got closer and closer, the sounds of nature, the bird song, the crickets. Depending on the time of day, maybe there were some crickets. There was nature sounds. The, the sounds of nature got quieter and quieter. And this melody got louder and louder and more enthralling and enticing. Until she came to a tree. And it was a big, long tree. One of the tallest trees that she'd ever seen. And at the bottom of it, there was a stone. And she... It was heavy, but she moved the stone out of the way, and there was a hole. A hole that was too small for you to fit your entire face into, but just big enough for you to put an arm in. She put her ear, and it was so clear, that music, so, so clear. Perhaps pipe, fiddle, drum singing and then she replaced her ear with her eye to see what was making the noise and there was tiny people lots and lots of colorful tiny dancing people fairies a whole group of fairies doing a whole routine she watched them but then in the distance, she could see one of the guy fairies, the male fairies, the man fairies, that wasn't joining in with everyone else. And he looked at her. And in that moment, she knew that she was doing a bad thing and she pushed away, pushed that stone back, dropped her flowers and ran home. And there she told her mum what had happened. And her mum was sympathetic, but told her that nothing was wrong, that everything was good. All the stories about fairies getting revenge, that's just old wives' tale. A nice story to tell about the local area. And the girl was relieved. But then her dad came home, and he was less understanding. Oh, girl, oh, my pretty girl, you know the fairies will have to take you now. We've as good as lost you. Why did you listen to us? Her mum asked her dad whether or not he could go down and see if anything could be done. There was a, a wise woman who lived at the end of the street and maybe she could help. And so he left the house. And he went down to where the wise woman lived and went to knock on the door. And as he did so, the door opened. He peered in. He walked into this house and it was a strange house, the house of a, a magical lady. How strange it was again, you decide. Perhaps there were floating 
items. There were not floating items, but there could have been. It was the sort of house that he wouldn't be surprised to see floating items. And as he got to where the woman was, a roaring fire. And she was sat looking into it. I saw you coming in the flames. Oh, you did? Uh, hi. I've got a question to you. Ask a request, perhaps. I know what you are here for. You want to protect your daughter from the fairies. Yes, I do, and so do you. Yes, I have a way. They will come if they haven't left already and they will be at your house at midnight. They will take your daughter unless you make the house silent. If you can make the house silent, they cannot touch her. Go, go and make your house silent. Not a peep could be heard. Thank you, wise woman. And then he turned and he left that house and he rushed back to his. He lived on a farm. It was just him, his wife, the girl's mother and the girl. And there were so many animals. There were horses, there were cows, there were chickens, there were pigs. There were dogs and cats. And as he went into the house, he told the girl and the girl's mother that they had to make everything silent. All the clocks, the hands and the, the motors would be taken out of them. The doors would be oiled down so that they didn't creak. The windows would be shut. And all of the animals, those horses and pigs and cows and dogs and cats and chickens would be fed so much food that they would sleep and sleep and sleep through the night and into the next day. And then when everything was done and the house was silent, he then went and he told the girl to go up to her room and not to answer the door to anyone. To go under the covers and just sleep. And then he sat with the girl's mother and waited. And they could hear the soft sound of thudding hoofs at 11 o'clock. And then at half 11 the noise got louder and louder. It seemed that the fairies were taking ages to get here and every minute went by so slowly. Then, at five to twelve, soft tappings could be heard. And the same music that the girl had heard was as if the fairies had come with a whole marching band. And then, at twelve o'clock, the sound of a dog barking. The dad and the mum looked at each other and turned and ran upstairs and into the girl's bedroom. The window was thrust open, the covers were flown off of the bed and the tiny little dog was barking into that open sky. And they realised when they had fed all the other animals they had left the girl's dog that she took with her always. The mum said, you must go, go to the wise lady and see if anything can be done. And so he did. He went back to that old lady, pushing the door open. <coughs> I saw you coming in the flames. They took your daughter. I saw it in the flames. 
But you can still save her. What you must do is answer these three riddles. First, you must find a light that does not burn. Second, you must find a chicken that has no bones. And third, you must find the limb of an animal that has been taken without bloodshed. And if you take those items and you place it into the fairy home, your girl will be returned. Thank you, wise woman. And the man left the house. The strange riddles going around his head. People at home, do you have the answers to any of these? The man certainly didn't. A light that doesn't burn. A chicken that has no bones. And the limb of an animal that has been taken without bloodshed. A light that doesn't burn. A chicken without bones. A limb without blood. And as he was taking that journey back, he went a different way. He walked the scenic route that was through a forest. And as he was walking through that forest, he saw a light. For of course it was the middle of the night, and now crickets could be heard. And as he got closer to that light, he wondered what it could be. A candle? A torch? He reached down and moved some of the leaves. Ha <laughs> ha! A glow worm. A light that doesn't burn. And he placed it into his pocket, happy that he had answered one of those questions. And then he returned home with a bit more of a spring in his step. Janet! Janet, we, we can still save our daughter. Hear me out. Uh, we have three riddles that we have to answer. A, a light that doesn't burn, a chicken that has no bones, and the limb of an animal that has been taken without bloodshed. Sounds hard. Look, look. A glowworm. It's a light that doesn't burn. Janet was less impressed, realising that they only got one of those three things. They put their heads together and they began to try and work out how to... what, what a chicken is without bones. The next morning they began taking some of the little chicks and, and feeling around. No, this one's got bones. This one's got bones. Then Janet came with an idea. The eggs! Should we check the eggs? They went into a stall that had loads and loads and loads, hundreds perhaps, of little eggs. And all of them were labelled with the time that they were laid. Hear this, Dave. There must be a moment where a chicken has grown inside the egg, but hasn't yet developed bones. How they worked it out, I do not know, but they narrowed it down from day one to the day of birth. The 13th day. The 13th day. There is a chicken inside this egg, but he doesn't yet have bones. Answer number two. And they put that chicken egg with the glow worm as they began to think about the third question. The third riddle. The limb of an animal that has been taken without bloodshed. They lived on a farm. There were lots and lots of animals and they began to think. 
obviously if we cut a cow's foot off, it's going to bleed. Could, could, we took, could, could we cut the dog's tail off, maybe? No, no. The limb of an animal. What about an arm? Is that arms or fingers? Is a finger a limb? They could not think of an answer. For many days they paced around that farm trying to work out how they could remove a limb without causing bloodshed. The day came when the man was pacing outside his farm and he saw a boy and the boy was playing with something. And as he got closer he noticed it was a lizard. And what he was doing, he was grabbing the tail of the lizard and the lizard would walk away and grow a new one. Boy, can I have that tail? The boy gave the man the tail without really asking any questions. The man looked at the tail. A tail is a limb. And this limb has been taken without bloodshed. He pocketed the final item, went home and told Janet that he had done it. Three magical, impossible items. And then he went out into the fields where his daughter was playing. And then the music came, the same music that played on the night that she was taken. The soft melody enticing him. But he didn't need to be enticed, he was going with purpose. And as he went there, he pushed the stone out of the way and there was the circle. And he looked in and he could see, he could see his daughter inside. And all the fairies were around her. Fairies, I have found your items, now release my daughter. A noise came out that wasn't quite human. It wasn't English, it didn't have a language. I have here a light that doesn't burn, and he placed the glowworm into that hole. A chicken that has no bones, and he placed the egg of 13 days into the hole. And the limb of an animal taken without bloodshed, and he placed the lizard's tail into the hole. Suddenly, the noise of the music erupted. The whole tree shook. The man was thrust back with a strange energy. And when he awoke, there in front of him was his daughter. Dishevelled, dirty, but alive. And he held her tight. And she turned to him and said, Dad, I don't think I'm going to go picking flowers for a while. And then they both went home, sharing stories about the fairies and that they sometimes have a dark side.